Okay. Sorry, Grim. I uh, got off to a late start there. Um, I had a, something turned off that I didn't realize I'd turned off. So I'm starting a few minutes late here tonight. Anyway, this is Flash at the In a Perfect World program on Tuesday night. We're at the 18th of December, 2018. And uh, I'm going to say hi to, to the first thing I want to get over is the hellos to the RLM room, where all this stuff really kind of originates from anyway. We all know each other through this little chatty room site that we uh, visit pretty much daily. Anyway, what have we got here? We got Barman, Cowboy Tech. Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Asmo, Chalcedony, Circle, Hello, honey, Chloe, Chloe the Hippie, Me, Graham Z, Ivy Don C, Ponder Gander, Avon, Poxified, Poxbone, Rain, Arlen, Fluke, Rob Works, Rums, Vinny Skipper, Phantom, Beetle, Cyborg Noodle, <laughs> Dakota, Frumpy, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kozu, mm, Nensen, Dubois, Fanuel, Poxahome, Ponsa, Sock Puppet, and Skittle. And if that sounded like I was creating a new language, I was just reading the names on the, the chat room board. Trying to be sociable in a perfect world and at least say hi to the, the crazy people that hang out into the room, you know. Spread their vast wealth of knowledge and information, you know, amongst us. Hey, Cirque, I'll see you when you get back. Cirque's taking the pooch out for a perfect walk in a perfect world on a perfect fuse day. Anyway, okay, um, so I think I sorted this out with the radio. I, I think I'm live. I said hello. I said where I was, and uh, Grimner puts the show out, BitChute, and uh, Spreaker, and a bunch of other places, other sites, the RLO site, what else? Well, um, I guess I've just stopped using a lot of sites. Let's just, the internet's got real, uh, not much left to inform me of, you know, I've learned everything I'm going to learn. And if I really want to know something in particular, I know how to use a browser. So, at this point in the time zone, I'm not so much uh, using the the internet as anything more than um, a way to communicate with other people. I'm not learning anything, and not because I know everything. It's just there, there's nothing for me to know that I can actually put into practice any further than I already have without doing some kind of research or some kind of deep studying to figure it, all the details out so I don't do something stupid and screw it all up. Well, I guess I'm live and they got me. Vin Skipper says, got it. I don't know what he's talking about, but could be me, could be you. Anyway. So what do we want to do tonight on the In a Perfect World podcast? And what have I got? At last week, I did a thing on um, reality, I think it was. And then, you know, you, we got to realize sides are chosen for us through ways that we have no fucking control over. And I'll, I'll explain it with this. My father wrote on my birth certificate, apparently, this is the story, I got a copy to, to look it up, but the part where it said um, uh, nationality or uh, whatever they called it back in the day, I was written up as white, Caucasian or whatever the hell it is, not not Mexican or not English, it was like something else, so, hmm. now he made that decision regardless of truth or perspective or however parents feel about what they're writing on these fucking forms. Um, those things follow you through your whole life. No matter what people see about you, if you're in that paper world, there's another you. That's why I believe in the straw man. 
because there's two yous. There's the real you, and then there's this paper you that does shit that you don't do, and it doesn't think, it doesn't feel anything. It just kind of stands in your place. Oh, look at my certificate. I got a certificate for something or an award, and they scribble shit down, and they write your name on it. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Well, if that stuff is real, and it's real to the person that receives it, then look at how easily we're tricked and manipulated with a little fancy ink work and some paper. And that's the truth of it. But it's not popular truth. Not a lot of people are going to run down to the DMV and demand their money back in the morning and tell those crooks they've had enough of their extortion racket. They don't want to play anymore. They're not driving. They're fucking traveling. And it, it, say 100,000 people would do that at a time, I'll bet it would slow it down. Hmm. Hey, look at the lines at the DMV to get served when you want something. How would the government react to you if you rejected them and said, well, whatever this shit is, we don't want it anymore. Leave us alone. We are going home. <laughs> now, people talk a big game, you know, but... When push comes to shove, the government has got a lot of um, it's got a lot of toys to express its power. You know, uh, threats of violence and imprisonment, and a long, long list of people who were truly guilty of crime. But those people went to prison anyway. You know, no matter how much money they made, no matter who who they bribed to get where they got to. In the end of the game, it was all up to whoever's really in power, and it turns out it wasn't them. And this government fucking entity will uh, create a law just to catch the biggest crook that you know in whatever crooked business game there is, like the weed thing. Christ, they arrested people for. I suppose on paper it looked like they were tra they were smuggling pot. Which to me is like, okay, and what's the big deal? You could grow the fucking shit if you just throw some seeds out in the field. You don't even need to tend it. It's it's a weed. It does what it does. And over the years, you've had people that you know have perfected just like bonsai trees or roses or what are those other ones? Orchids. You know, people that love plants way more than I ever will. They take an interest in growing something. And they create these just monsters, you know, beautiful plants, and they're huge, and they're very potent, and this and that and the other on purpose. And I don't go for all that stuff. I like the simple life, you know, or just, well, anyway. There's no reason to get all ertsy snertsy about what kind of pot you smoke. It's like uh, wine drinkers or people that drink scotch. You know, because scotch tastes like dirt. Good scotch tastes like mud. Real good mud, but mud. And that's my opinion of it. Of course, the scotch drinker that enjoys his scotch doesn't hold that opinion. Or maybe he does, but gets the effect that he's looking for from it and will not tell you the truth. Because in the you know, in society, people kind of tend to uh, bend the truth to explain their taste. You know, you can't get people to just answer a yes or no question in life. It's almost like pulling hair. They just want to explain everything so you understand them. And yes or no would have been fine, but they saw Perry Mason and Columbo, and they think everything needs a 30-minute explanation. Like tonight, like me, me doing this radio podcast, uh, I haven't been asked any direct questions, so I'm not really responding to anything more than what I'm thinking about. I'm trying to find a way to tell the other guy, hey, you ever look at it like this, whatever it may be. And like Vinny named the show tonight, the road goes on forever because the repetition of life is... Um, mundane to some people. It used to be mundane to me. Did not like routines. It did not like uh, certainty and all that being safe and 
oh, I'm going to be so happy here. I no, I was like, uh, see what was over the next hill. And now I'm older. So now it's, eh, I'm done with looking over the hills. If there's anything out there left to find, well, then I missed it. Whoop. You know, so instead of being, uh, wishing I was somewhere else, like, we got a character on the RLM, and his answer to everything is spaceships. But, you know, I'm the guy that left the place that made me unhappy by a fluke. I didn't even know I wanted to get out of there until I got out of there. And then once I was out of there, then it became obvious, hey, I kind of like it where I'm at. I think I'll stay here and do something different for a while. And that's gone on and gone on, and now it's been seven years or something. And I have no intention of returning to the land of Oz, you know, but that's intention. So I'm comfortable where I'm at for a change. And, and I think that the sides were chosen for us. You know, you, uh, you follow a path, and the path takes you to certain places. And you have little things that you do along the road, and if you... Don't avoid some things, though things that will cause you problems, and you participate in that, you have a problem. And if you can avoid it or go around it or get beyond it, then you don't have to deal with all that negative shit. But we're, we're interesting uh, people, I guess. Well, legally, we're, we're supposed to be people or persons or human or some fucking name that the, the state wants to slap on us. And it's not for identification. It's deeper than that. It's for sorting us like a commodity because we're chattel to the government. And there's a handful of people in the RLM that think I'm crazy when I say that out loud. But, uh, no, nah, we're nobody. Bush just died. Think about that. Now, he... He's gone, and the world didn't slow down one fucking blank. It continued to go without him. So, I think the illusion of the players involved in the game having anything to do with the game is so blatantly obvious, right? Staring you right in the face. It doesn't matter who's sitting in that seat. It doesn't matter what that person sitting in the seat tells you. Something else is happening. And I don't hear too awful many people complain openly about that. Maybe on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat room. But outside of that, few people on minds, mostly memes. You know, it's uh, not a lot of original content as far as the political crap. You know, all that hate Trump or hate Hillary or whoever the fuck you're supposed to fucking hate. I don't know. They're all the damn same, you know. I said it easily, you lucky bastard. But, you know, uh, sides were chosen. And then we're given this, uh, this this bullshit story about how these two people that, that are related to each other and are, are running against each other for the highest office in the country. But they already, they've known each other their whole fucking life. That, you know, and they get in front of a camera. And then they talk a bunch of double talk negative bullshit that doesn't ever go anywhere. Nobody ever addresses the truth about how things work, banking, uh, the birth certificate, all the the real things that are buried under underneath all the stories. Uh, b- baking soda. That's my favorite one so far. I thought it was the straw man, but I, I think baking soda's got me. This medicine thing is. Whew. Wow, it's uh, it's got such good hooks, you know, to to snack, snatch you. So they catch you in a weak moment, and they tell you something that makes you feel better mentally, and you think it's an answer, and all it is is a trap. Now, I don't have any particular way to prove that to anybody, but I feel it's way more than an opinion because... If you look at the results of modern day medicine, I guess the way to do that would the best way to do it is go to a hospital or a place where people are ill, hang out there for the day, and then you know f- make your decision from that i don't I don't think people get better from going to the doctor. 
I think quite the opposite. I got better after I gave up trying to get better through a doctor. And I was more willing to listen to something else besides take these freaking pills. And I remember when I would take the pills, they were uh, not upsetting, but there was a, an uncomfortable feeling about the, and the swallowing them and, and them hitting my system. And it never it never ceased. From I never got used to them. You know, if you take certain things, vitamin C doesn't bother me to take that. But these uh, blood pressure pills that they had me on did. And I remember the emotional, I don't like this. So, fortunately for me, I have, uh, hmm, how do you put it? Uh, I don't really think much of living and dying. You know, I'm not, oh, if I do this, I'm, I could risk my life. Well, that's fucking life. That's the way things go. You drive down the street in a car that's destined to be in a car wreck, and there you go. But you don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming. Some people think they do. Me, I just do what I do and go where I go and take it as it comes. Other people are more cautious, and they think they think of the worst all the time, and I've lived amongst people like that. The negative Nellies that, you know, they're never going to succeed at anything they do, and they're mopey and sad. You know, boo-hoo, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Then there's people like um, like me that just don't care. I mean, what difference does it make? Yesterday's finished, and you're in the now. Tomorrow ain't here yet, so, hmm. There's not much more to my life than right now unless I'm with somebody else. <laughs> when other people are around, then, then yesterday and tomorrow comes into play, you know, because the sides were chosen. And you have all these stories. You Either you go along with them and you get along in society, or you think for yourself and you come up with a different answer, whatever that may be about whatever the question is. And if it's different than the mainstream, has preached it to be, you're, even the people that love you dearly will shake their fucking head at you and roll their eyes because their conditioning to the knowledge is so deep-rooted. And it doesn't even matter. It's, it's not life-threatening knowledge. If you have it, you don't succeed any better in anything than the guy that doesn't have it. What matters is what you claim to have. I was a college graduate more than one time in my life without any freaking paperwork to prove it. But people never doubted the the information after I gave it to them. It wasn't like, well, let's see, we have to check into you, mister, blah, 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 blah. They give you an opportunity before they wasted a bunch of money checking out if you could do your job in, in the way you claim you could. It was a different world in the my late 20s when I was transitioning from professional to bum, you know, before I'd given up. And I got married once after that, but with no, uh, I didn't have any ambition. My wife did. My second wife wanted a, a business. I'm going to tell an old story. This will crack a few people up. But uh, back in the early, early 90s, we just had this child and we were trying to figure out ways to survive and make money and do all this, that, and the other. And the wife says, give me 150 bucks and I'll, I'll start a business. So, of course, blindly, she doesn't tell me what first. She leads me into this. And, uh, and it turns out she wanted to sell um, dildos and lingerie at home parties. And I thought, wow, you're out of your freaking mind. But the first year she did it, she, she grossed like 30 grand, plus the work that uh, I got myself involved in the company that she was working for doing uh, advertising, basically. Made them uh, catalogs and advertising. But me and her didn't last, but her business did, and I'm not a prick, so I, I never tried to destroy her through finance and take the business away. We had a kid together. So anyway, she ended up <clears throat> doing pretty well with the business and going on and going to UT and going to college for a while. But she got cancer, and as the status will, 
doesn't listen to alternatives to what exists. There you go. And uh, my daughter is not too pleased with me being over here in Denmark, but you know, people do what they do. I was great when I was with my my mom, you know, but we're in this perfect world, and when things don't give you the response you want from them, you choose a side. And it's almost impossible in, day, in daily life not to be on a side of something, for something, against something. I, like I was reading and listening to links about, I think it was a teacher refused to sign the pledge to Israel thing and lost her position in the education system as a result of not bowing to Israel. And not only that, but Congress wants to make it punishable to boycott Israel. Anybody else, that's what you do to punish people is finance. You sanction them. <clears throat> but the, uh, if, you really, if you're really a pro-Israel out there and you, you think a lot of that country, you should take a look at the, uh, the rules, <laughs> the international law that the Jews are above. Type into your your, uh, your browser, just ask, Are the is Israel above international law? And see what kind of responses you get back from that. Anyway, even in the mainstream, people are losing their jobs because now if you don't openly support these people, then you're, anti, you're an anti-Semite. And that's been hijacked and butchered and misused for years and years and years. People that are, are for this and against that and in this religious war crap, half of them don't even know what the hell is going on. Most of them, 99% of them don't seem to really understand that <laughs> Israel never existed. It was a Palestine people. They had people living there. And these other people just came in and said, hey, we're moving in. Why don't you guys move over? We're, we're bringing some shit. Move over. Hey, move over a little further. And over, what, 70 years, they've taken most of the damn country away from these people and written enough shit in the MSM and books and whatnot to blame the victims for the problems that exist to make this all happen. It's, it's a land grab disguised as a religious war. And you choose, you're forced to choose a side in it. That's how, that's how they keep us in these little boxes, you know, little cages. And you get your little trees to look at. And you're sometimes you even have a blue sky. But you know, we're in little boxes and and bigger in a bigger box, like the f confines of our of our government protected freedoms between these borders are you kidding me what a bunch of nonsense because all that talk isn't worth a fuck until somebody is physically enforcing a written code or statute or whatever the hell they got it, it's never a law and that i think i figured that out from between how how on a beyond behind the woodshed and a handful of other people I've managed to conjure up through the internet webs, you know, looking for the answers that would, you know, fix my mental ability to understand what I'm looking at in this world. And I found one guy. I talked about him when I found him, and people didn't seem too impressed. But what he worked out in a way to explain all this, so to speak, is... Uh, the law is written in a degree as a math equation. You know, this this word has this much power and over that one. If they're done in a correct order, like a math equation, it means a different thing than what you read because they're writing it in legalese, which is completely different language. And depending on the structure of the sentence, the word has a different definition. <laughs> That's why Bill Clinton asked in front of everybody looking like an idiot. That depends on what the defini it, definition of is, is. Because in legalese, that definition could change your answer 
to a whole nother answer because of the way that the law interprets the word is in a certain order in that particular sentence. And these things are real. They exist. I've been to court. I've seen the, the law. And it's not Perry Mason. You know, that stuff's just television. All that, uh, you can't handle the truth bullshit from Jack Nicholson. And, I mean, it's great theater. and It's fun to watch it. But if you go to court and you do that in a court, somebody's going to put handcuffs on you and put you in a cell because you don't behave like that in a courtroom. That's what the uh, judge and the and the lawyers and all the other fucking morons in that mess are trying to get the person that's brought in there against their will to act up so they can throw them in what hey there's another charge. Look at this because what was once law was it was hijacked by this group of pirates and they used the admiralty court laws on the people on the, on the land right in front of us. And it's so big and it's so massive. You used to be able to go in there, if you could figure it out, go in there and, and fight them. And 20, 30 years ago, the, the uh, magistrates that sit as judges, most of these guys don't even sign their oaths. They do everything illegally first off, but people don't challenge any of that because it costs so much money to fight them. <laughs> so we're, we're in this loop with the government, and we're in this loop with the Admiralty Court, you know, because your sides were chosen, you, it, and it's never, like Vinny said at the show, it's never going to end, it's forever. The road goes on and on and on, and if you're uncomfortable on the road, all you got to do is just decide what will make you comfortable and then go get it crying out loud you know it's it's life that life will tell you what you need where people will tell you what to want you know advertising and selling this and be somebody wearing that and all that kind of crap um, but then there's necessities that you got to have too hmm well, in a perfect world, how would we look at necessities? I don't know if I've ever given necessities any consideration on this particular show. Uh, what comes to mind, though? Hmm. What do we need? And then we think about the three things that we need, and probably be something to drink, water, for example, you know, your basics, um, something to eat, and sleep. And those are your three basic, fundamental, everybody needs those three things. But there's more things that we need that aren't added to that list on purpose. You know, it's like they keep it simple and short to distract you from, you know, this is a big life. Things things aren't as simple as they seem, but they're not as complicated as they appear. It's like there's a center to life when you get into it. If you look at it, from a distance, it looks, oh my God, it's overwhelming, I can't do that. But if you take a step towards it, the closer you get, the clearer things are, until you get too close, and then it's a blur again. So there's a balance point in pursuing whatever in life it is that you want. And I don't know, maybe my wants are more uh, excessive than I thought they were, because I ended up in Denmark with Cirque, but I started out in L.A., <laughs> so um, I have no answer to why I'm here, except for this is, you know, my life road that goes on forever took a little pit stop in Denmark. Hmm. Well, works for me, and their sides, I think these people are more neutral than any place I've ever been. Um, they're not a, they come from this uh, history of Viking and warrior, and that might all well be true. I don't know. I've just read the stories, and people have told me, but I wasn't here. I didn't see none of that. I just, well, maybe in a film, but in reality, no. My, my physical life has been uh, war-free. I've seen a little bit of violence over the years, but 
you know, not to the point of murder or not to the point of, like, multiple people ended up in the hospital. No, nothing like that. No major car accidents. Nothing. Just kind of – I had a bike wreck, and I always say I've never had a wreck. But, yeah, I did when I was 14. But, see, one of those mental things where as you get older, you start – neglecting to remember things that piss you off. Because I was a motorcycle enthusiast when I was young, but that wreck cured me of that. I've spoken about it before. Anyway, but see, sides are chosen for you. And you think, oh, well, I'm not going to ride a bike anymore. Well, because the side was picked for me. I got mangled, so to speak. Not physically, but definitely put a... a I got side, I got hit from the side like uh, in a V, and the guy come coming out of the bushes had hit my front tire, almost in the middle of the front wheel, and bent it. But I went flying over that, you know, over the overhead, way out into the field on my face off the road. So I I went and hit the dirt and whatnot. But I had a helmet and leather and whatnot. But it was still, it was enough to to think. There are careless people out there that, you know, do insane things like come out of bushes onto a straightway. That everybody that's riding there should realize this is a straightaway. Don't come plowing into it without, you know, checking it out first. But even back then we had idiots, you know. So, but, yeah, my road was in in that that respect because there was no uh, negotiating about it. He said, wait a minute, I'm I'm not crazy enough to try that again. But my father did expect me to finish the day, and I did that, but that was the last of it. And I rode three-wheelers after that, but never rode a, a motorcycle again. So, hmm. I wonder what that's all about. There must be some kind of, like, uh, if I took talk to a shrink, like when I was a kid, you know, they sent me to the shrink. I was like, what? 13 or so, 12, 13. Anyway, so the doctor says, he introduces himself, and we're going to talk for a while. He's asking me questions on and on and on. And he says to me out of nowhere, he says, uh, so, Lewis, uh, why, why is it you hate your father? And, well, I looked at him, and I said, wow, what's your fucking problem, Charlie? I don't have a, I don't hate my father, you weirdo. You, is this what I'm here for? So change the subject goes on and on and on and then out of nowhere he looks up and he says hey lewis and why do you hate your mother and again i just got pissed off at me what, what kind of weirdo shit is this okay we'll change the subject he changes it one more time and then out of nowhere he comes up with well lewis how old when you first had sex and i'm sitting there all of 13 years old hadn't had sex yet and i looked at him and i said i don't know seven or eight and he says my God, son, you had sex with a partner when you were seven years of age? And I said, with a partner. <laughs> anyway, that was an old psychiatrist joke. I should have probably done it at the dork table, but I don't know. I've been smoking on the pipe load tonight. And let's see what's going on in the real world of reallibertymedia.com. And it uh, looks like Grim and Moose are discussing something about something at on an eBay thing. Guess that doesn't matter to you, but sometimes the the RLM chat people will say maybe ask a question or inspire something, but not tonight. Tonight I'm just roaming around in the memories of uh, you know my version of reality because there's. I remember a guy in Florida I used to work for, and and I had a problem with one of the coworkers, and me and her just weren't seeing eye to eye. We were not getting along about something, and he was dating her, so he got stuck in the middle, and she didn't want to deal with me. Blah blah blah. So me and Mike end up riding home one day, and he says, "Well, this is the problem. We've got your side, and then we have her side." And then we got what really happened, and I don't know what that is, because you both are telling me what you see. So the problem couldn't be resolved, because we couldn't get the truth. So me and her ended up just working in two different houses. 
that's how serious uh, she was about disliking me for whatever her reason was. And I thought, <laughs> but, but you know, the, Mike, the guy I worked for at the time, he had a good way of dealing with it, and he had the resources to, to make it work for everybody. And instead of bitching at and, and throwing a fit and yelling at people, he said, well, we're just going to, we're going to put you on a, a tile job and she can paint. She, she does paint better than you do anyway. So that solved that because she didn't want to do the tile. And I preferred it, but I got stuck on this painting crew. And there you go. Had to find a way out. And apparently, I did. <laughs> Grim nurses, we're not inspiring you, Flash somebody? <laughs> I don't know. I glanced at the chat. Just on a, a memory rant tonight. Trying to think of something interesting to remember about. Pass on to the radio listeners out there in the electronic world, you know. Because it's so important for uh, people to know shit. <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake. I think that if you just make up your own mind, and that's it. It doesn't matter what you think. What matters is what you tell people that you think. <laughs> And I have a feeling, and you're not going to believe this, but yeah, you heard it here first on the, in a perfect world. I have a feeling that people misrepresent what they what they believe about reality to fit into certain groups because certain things, no matter how acceptable they may be, they were unacceptable a lot longer than they're ever going to be acceptable. Hmm. But. I really kind of enjoy somebody that can uh, hate something but vote it in, you know, vote for it to be legal, whatever the hell they think legal. I don't know why they don't understand. Illegal and legal are just the same thing. It doesn't matter. You, if, if it's legal, that means there's limits. And if you break the limits, well, where's the legal part coming in? No, you're you're buying a license to break a law. It's it's a scam. We're we're being had. <laughs> I like to say that particular line. We're being had, people. Skinned alive like chickens, and uh, we line up for it. Some people, some of us, beg for it. You ever see those um, Walmart things where they're getting TVs and wow, or lootings? You know, they they get a damn hurricane, and these idiots are out there looting televisions. No electricity, <laughs> but I got a 60-inch television. <laughs> Look at me. I'm cool. Wow. Uh, Cowboy Tech is posting for me. Hold on. I will take a look. Uh, I get flashbacks in my memory about all kinds of weird stuff comes to mind. And uh, hurricanes and earthquakes, they're the scary things. So Cowboy Tech posts up here, people say I act like I don't give a fuck. Motherfuckers, I'm not acting. Well, you know what? That's what I think the un the uh, the untold truth behind everything. Yeah, perfect, Rob. That's how most people really feel, but it's not popular to say that. When you say that shit out to others, other people seem to get tense and take it personal like it was at them you know i didn't take that personally oh you don't give a fuck about me and no they, you don't you don't take the the exterior any more seriously than you seem to have to cowboy tech so i i agree with your post thanks for thanks for putting it up for me to see because that makes me feel awful special you know because you put up some of the best links there are on rlm to see and Rob works, and Grimnir, and, well, Moose Girl puts up a lot of music more than anything else. But, um, you know, the, the participation we, we participate in, it gets people's attention. And I'm just one to mention it on a radio program because I'm crazy about the reallibertymedia.com chat room. <laughs> um Oh, is it 75 inches now, Miss Kate? I don't know. I, I gave up on hurricane watching. I've been through a couple of them, but uh, nah, they don't entertain me. You know, it's like a, 
for a while there, a couple of the fellows on the Real Liberty Media, they kept posting this damn site about um, speed freaks. They have a, a now. This is a society that we live in. Okay, they have a street camera on some kind of street corner, and they're watching people. I never opened the link, but this is the chitter chatter about it. So these people are doing drugs, physically doing drugs, and then hanging out in the street somewhere, under a bridge or whatever. And other people are watching that as a form of entertainment. And I thought, wow, there's a new low. You know, hey, maybe next month they'll have the abortion channel on there. You can get real good with you. You know, you can watch the gore and the, all that kind of shit and really be entertained by other people's misery. Yeah. I read that the uh, the relics at the SCOTUS or some state in particular, it might be the SCOTUS, so it's either that or the, some particular state, and they want uh, abortion to be a right. And, you know, wow, that's... Hmm. That's how cheap life has become, is instead of uh, being responsible for yourself or dealing with the consequences that you didn't foresee happening, there's now ways to get rid of this like it's a, a bad thing. You know, get rid of your kid. Just go get an abortion. Instead of, you know, watch who you sleep with and think about your future. <laughs> but... That's not what we're taught. Now look, it's so obvious, and they do it through the freaking state. They're pitching and selling these young people <laughs> all these loser ideas that are designed to fuck all of us and get rid of people. And meanwhile, they had marijuana to fill up the... See, the, the crime was going to go down with that lack of poor people being born theft and robbery and murder was going to drop, and they had all these prisons to fill. What are they going to do? Hey, let's get the pot smokers. And that lasted until, what, about five years ago, people started to seem to get wise to this. Hey, you notice the feds got more people locked up for pot than the rest of the world has locked up for everything? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, and then uh, now they're doing programs on television where they're saying, well, the guy's been on death row for 30 years, and we found out through DNA testing that he never did anything to anybody, just like he said. Isn't that a shame? Wow. So we've got a, a, you know, a morbid judicial system that's unforgiving, and when they make a decision, that's that. They don't want to change it. They don't care what it is. Now, if you're on the winning side of that argument, you get out. There's the same, it works the same way. It's like that double jeopardy law. They can't try you for the same crime twice. So if you can find a way to sneak out of being you know, caught the first time or prosecuted or whatever that shit is, they can't do it to you a second time. <laughs> what? Oh, man. I don't understand that. I don't really care. You know, I'm not murdering anybody, but they've got laws protecting criminals from prosecution. You know, they've got laws protecting Israel from public boycotts. If you're against Israel, then you're a... What the fuck? But if you're against this other country, Venezuela, say, you're not an anti-SPIC. Or wait, no, that's not SPIC. What, what would be Venezuelan? So what's a slang for a Venezuelan? We need some... Do we got any filthy uh, rednecks out there in the RLM chat that... How about you, Rob Works? <laughs> You're a filthy redneck. What do you call a fella from Ven? You know, like wetback? That's just Mexican, or is that does that cover the entire south of the border thing, man? You know what I mean? Huh? 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 I have an inquiring mind. i got to know these things. <laughs> but... But you know, everybody gets a turn in the barrel. Now it's the white guy's turn. Boy, those poor white people are, they're acting just like the black people used to. Uh, it's okay to be white. You know, what? Wait a minute. If it's so okay, why are you telling me this? Hmm. There must be some doubt in your mind if you're looking for approval. <laughs> I mean, 
You know, I don't know. It's like the the all the uh, the gun pictures with girls, where the the girl if the girl was to fire that freaking gun, it would probably put her on her butt. She wouldn't know how to stand, or yeah, something would go wrong. Wouldn't have the upper body strength to control the damn thing, and probably hurt her somehow. Anyway, I've even seen a few links on YouTube. <laughs> Jeez, and I don't think they're funny. I think it's funny because I'm so against guns in my mind. Not physically. If you want guns, have guns. I just think they're a pussy weapon. When the only reason I can imagine in the world I would need a gun is if I was going to try to kill somebody I didn't want them to fight me. I wanted them to not see it, so I shoot them with a gun. But I'm not really like that. I just go up to you and go, hey, I've been thinking about shooting you with a gun. You want to fight? <laughs> I'm kidding, but I I think I you know in that situation that's what I do. I would never shoot anyone from behind the wall, you know, where they didn't see it coming. That's that's a pussy game. And then people talk about handguns. Yeah, well, you know what's wrong with your handguns is in close within ten feet or so. Handguns are about as useless as tits on bacon. But you know, this is my opinion from the way I see all this crap from my experience, you know, with or without them. <clears throat> and, you know, somebody else with a loaded gun and you with an unloaded gun could end badly. So, you know, it's not even a, a safe toy to play with unless you're, you know, doing it within the confines of their little government sanctuaries wherever people have to go to play with guns. And, you know, it's that, that kind of... Uh, Control has taken over everything in my lifetime to the point of I don't even want it anymore. And there was a time where, uh, sure, we had guns. My father had guns. My brother had guns. Most everybody I've ever lived amongst, except for when I had been married, like Circle, not a gun lover. My passed away wife, not a gun lover. But, you know, there were times where I wasn't living married and people had lots of guns. I even had a friend that had a crossbow. I mean, jeez, talk about. Hmm. But it, nobody could load the damn thing except him. It, it took so much power to, to pull the damn bow. He had it so tight so that other people wouldn't load it and get, you know, hurt someone with it on an accident if it was taken or somebody should manage to find it where he kept it in his room and whatnot. No, tits on bacon, not and bacon, you crazy man. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 60 is so yesterday. 75 inches, I got nothing near 75 inches of TV. I wouldn't know what to do with that. Me and Cirk are happy with what we got. We're a simple little people, me and her, I think. So, But it's, you know, it's just the idea that there's a hurricane and there's people looting electronic stores. You know, just... Pointless and useless. Didn't seem to say. And it was all on, on camera. You know, it, I didn't grow up on camera. I grew up invisible. Nobody knew anything. Crying out loud. You wanted to just go five miles the other damn direction to another city you'd never been to, and people wouldn't know who you were. That's how big L.A. was. You could go anywhere. Anyway. And now it quite the opposite because now I'm in the perfect world. I think I was in the perfect world when I was in the city at the time. You know, it was perfect for my taste and my needs when it took place. But I grew out of something and life offered me opportunities. And Hey, go here for a while. And I'd go. And I would get involved with something and solve a big problem for somebody. And usually come out of it with a a uh, big favor connected to whatever it was I did. And for me, I don't know, fortune has always been that way. You know, uh, when things need to be done, like, here's an example. It's a strange example to make, to use. But when me and Cirque first took occupation physical of the house, the, the there had been some, some problem. I don't know what it could have been, but the basement had about a foot, foot or foot and a half of water down there and uh, needed to be pumped out and sir she's not mechanical she didn't know that blah, blah, how to work it what to do so they dropped me off at the house and I did it 
in somehow or another is what I mean is I always end up being important in some area where I'm the one that knew what to do. So that's that was my particular important part. But the moving, crying out loud, her family, it was like a machine. They, everybody jumped in and got busy, and we were on the third floor of an apartment building. And people were just organized and do this, and the women were telling you to do this and grab that. And everything went fine. But when it came to the basement thing, that was me. You know? And that's what I told her. I said, There's some things I'm good at and some things I'm horrible at. You know, Some problems that you give me, like, uh, I don't know, these political things, or tell me about the freaking news, or George fucking Bush. And I, I, my brain doesn't, you know, I don't click with George Bush. I'm not a George fan. I thought he was funny. You know, he was a hysterical president, crying out loud. You couldn't ask for a funnier guy. But, I don't know. He, he wasn't, I, I don't know. I didn't in, I didn't like him. And then with all that 9-11 jazz, and all that terrorist bullshit, come on. There, He was such an actor, you know. Like that morning when the 9-11 fell, and he's in that little kid's room, and he's got the book upside down. What the hell was he reading to him? I don't remember hearing audio. I just remember seeing somebody in a suit walk up behind and whisper in his ear. And then the book, I think it looked like it was the wrong way up, you know, upside down. So I could be wrong, but that's you know, when Cirque bring, brought up Bush earlier today about his, his him being almost a human being at, at a at the at his father's funeral, but then he's making jokes and yeah, I said, yeah, that that's just more fuel for me to to dislike the prick. <laughs> I I don't know. Is there an appropriate way to behave at a funeral? I don't know. I don't really give a shit. But I picked a side and I'm against uh, Bush. So whatever Bush does to irritate me, my side is gonna find ways to insult and harass because that's what sides do no good comes from a side hmm. but what I found out is good things come from a team you see now if you if you're on a team and there's people that you depend on to, to do certain things so that you can do your certain thing why whatever the goal is of the team gets accomplished and a team doesn't have to be any more than two people. You can have teams of two, teams of two million. Uh, but the bigger the population, then the lack of control, you know, to oversee what truly happens. And that's where you're stealing and you're lying and you're pillaging and you're raping all comes in. And people do it, too. Everybody on the news all the time about, oh, this guy molested me, and oh, this guy 30 years ago, he stuck a carrot in me, and then he smoked it. No, oh, blah, blah. You know, all this sex, weird, bizarre shit and sex comes up. Because we're in a perfect world, and rich people, they can do whatever the hell they want, because nobody's going to say shit about it for 30 years. <laughs> So have your fun. By the time they put you in jail, it ain't go, you ain't going to know you're in jail. We'll give you drugs for that. <laughs> ah, Java Doctor is cooking the best potato soup recipe. Well, good luck on your potato soup. Yes, yeah, sir. Cirque makes potato soup for us, too. I have a cooker wife. I'm not a cooker. What? I'm barely a eater. I don't know. Just never been one to chase more than I need for some reason. I gotta get greedy in this life and find something I got to have. Wonder what that would be. How about time? Because, you know, I've disavowed the clock, but other people keep throwing it at me. You know, <laughs> like my wife and my dog. <laughs> Because I've mentioned it before, I hope sorry about boring you guys with this one, but Hannah thinks she's an alarm clock dog. And if Cirque comes downstairs without me, and there's some point there's no time limit to it. It can but it'll be between the time she gets up and the time she goes to work. The dog will already have got me. She will not sit down here with one of us. The other one 
or she'll if Cirque's upstairs, she'll go up alone with Cirque, but she'll never she protects her. And so she's crazy. The dog thinks that she's our you know our protector from everything. It, you can hear it in her bark. She's only a thirty pound dog. She's not that big, but she she thinks she is, <laughs> and it's fun. But the alarm clock and and in that dog is uh, I don't know maybe that's part of that side side's been chosen for me because Sir I told her I wanted to have a dog talking back in in Copenhagen way before we ever got a house and all this other crap and then. She comes home with with Hannibal. I got to name Hannibal. But Cirque was going to go do the physical and go pick her. So what we ended up with somehow in the long run is like this combination of the two of us and a dog. I was co- kind of hoping that Moose picked out, uh, or maybe the dog picked her because she's been bragging a lot lately uh, how smart he is. You know, and he's following, he's doing this and that. But, yeah, something about being on the leash, probably walking him. Or you put him out on the line so he can take a, you know, an evening dump or whatever, maybe a, a winkle in the yard. I used to take Hannah out on a leash when she was a baby. And then over the time, she outgrew. She's so much bigger than the holes in the fence, she can't get through. What there is to get through is too too small for her. But she's... uh <laughs> She was a digger. I don't know if she'd dig under a fence now. She hasn't started to, so I, I guess at this this point in her life, she's probably as uh, as wild as she's ever going to be, like me. Because uh, I may not be as unpredictable as the smoke and hash would give one cause to believe. You know, I think I'm very just boring as hell when you think about it. Uh, all the exterior parts of the illusion that used to attract me have pretty much all lost the appeal. I mean, whatever it was, it aged, you know. It either aged or it showed its true self and you found out you were lied to. Or it decayed. And that's what time does to shit. You know, it changes it. You look at it and 30 years later, you don't know what you're seeing anymore because it's changed so much. And then there's some things in life that... They don't change because you're not looking at them from the outside. You're looking at them from a whole other kind of way that words don't really do much for explaining this for me. But it's not what I physically see that matters, you know. Um, it's like when I'm hungry. You start, sometimes she makes sandwiches because I don't really get fussy you know she doesn't feel like cooking after a job i don't give i don't care about stuff like that but what she does cook that she'll make like i don't know give you an example chicken and potatoes but she makes it look pretty and me i don't i don't participate in that show but she does and it's it's kind of fun to watch other people do the things that in life that i don't have an interest in physically doing but i still like to watch other people do them I guess they call that what do they call that voyeurism, Grim. Uh, when yeah, would well, it be more about sex and shit? But you know, I'm talking about just the ordinary things that people do in a daytime. Uh, sometimes, like cooking, it's kind of fun to watch other people mix things around, and they got timers and they're putting in their this and that at a specific boiling point. They're, Cooks are really interesting people to watch. Me, I put a can of beans in a pot and heat them up. That's cooking. No interest. I finished, finished, finished. But I still have to eat. <laughs> so it's a catch-22 in, in my perfect world on food. But I could have bigger problems in life than you know deciding what food I want and misunderstand, say, the legal system. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Uh, and there was a time, I, I would suppose, looking back on it, that was what I did. You know, I looked at it, and I saw it, but I didn't understand the uh, the cops didn't give two shits about me. I believed that stuff until I was about 12, and started at that point to realize, wait a minute, these people are, they're not what they're saying they are. Let's just say that. And then as I aged... 
people were brought in my life to prove my mistrust was true. Uh, actually, uh, having a friend <laughs> that was married to a cop and how that cop lived compared to how he earned his living were night and day. It was quite in, quite an enlightening experience to see the truth at you know 14 about how how a cop is <laughs> and you can't live in the city that you work in so that was kind of helpful to him at way back in, in those days because you know people uh, pot was cheap but this cop didn't pay for his pot <laughs> he, he got it from people at work so you know if you arrest them they oh, wait a minute I got a red light on my wire maybe somebody wants to come on to the our, to the show in a perfect world looks like Vinny hold on a second hey let me give Vincent a call and see what's going on I ran out I don't know I was just reminiscing about my perfect world let's see is that it all right did I hang up on you yeah wait 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 I'm stalling while I give my... Ah, there we go. Let's do it like this. Now, I put through my headphones, because last time I talked to Vincent, I seemed to have some kind of major malfunction. And uh, I didn't put him through on the headphone set. He was going live, so you couldn't hear him on the... There it is. Da, 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 da. Hey, what's up, Vinny? Hey, hi. I've been... Uh... I've been telling your story over here. I've got it all uh, copied and corrected into the uh, through this. Uh oh. Oh yeah, this is. I love this thing right here. It is the uh, the ProWritingAid dot com. Oh, you found yeah. a new thing to play with that. Yeah, this one is, that Cirque showed you the one where you can both write at the same time in different color. Uh, no, that's the no. where me and Cirque are uh, working together. This is uh, that that works too. But uh, there's like I don't know three four different things I'm doing this right here with. And uh oh crap. I well I seem to miss say, the old world Say hi to the say hi to the R L M chatters out there, Vincenzo. Hello, R L M hey, chatters I got out there. And I got Elixir from the Oh Life is good. Life what? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just kinda got stoned tonight and didn't feel political, did feel political, felt nostalgic, didn't feel nostalgic. Just run in my pie hole, see what, what I might run in. You know, you never know when you're going to say something that means anything. Well, that's the uh, weird part got, about doing this. You've got a pretty good list here. Why don't I just run through it here? This is oh. the first hour, and I posted it in a paste bin right there, and I think I didn't correct a, a word or two in there. Maybe. I'll, I'll look at it again. So, welcome to reallibertymedia.com, RLMradio.xyz. Find us playing at all kinds of places. So, today in a perfect world with Flash Somebody, uh, I took notes here to, to tell the story about the road that goes on forever in a perfect world. Makes perfect sense, right? And remember, this is uh, not a rule, but it is a requirement to add hashtag R-L-O-G. To all our broadcasts right here, and we've uh, captured a little landing place. It's like a library. Uh, nobody's using it and hasn't for a while. So every broadcast will be able to be accessible over there, kind of categorized in, uh, in a hashtag at Twitter. So add pound R L O G. Now that stands for radio log. Thank you, Circle. That is, was really a great find that you came up with. So also, I'm considering uh, a group on uh, realliberty.org or maybe even a little Facebook thing here for our uh, uh, realliberty.org uh, social site and, and add that. But that's more work I probably don't need to do right now. Anyways, R-Log. And it also stands for Real Liberty Org, R-L-O, group. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that could be played with that. So, so thanks, Hal. Hal is... Uh, He's uh, he's come on board. Now we've got you and uh, uh, Grimner, Moosey. Um, now I, I also tagged in the post. I, I tagged Gary because uh, you know the road less traveled, and we have Bo Diddy and some other folks involved over here at Real Liberty Media. 
uh, making it a, a perfect place. And it all does make perfect sense. So to this first hour, you've talked about bonsai and bong, uh, let me try that again. Bonsai and bong hits. To all good states, or Scotsmen, there's my misspelling. To all good Scotsmen, here's mud in your eye. We've got power in politics. Where are you from? Nationality? Would it smell as sweet by any other name? Can, that's life. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. Take it as it comes. Big Pharma, a hard pill to swallow. Uh, here's here's one that's kind of cute. What's the deal, though? <laughs> or what's the deal, though? Home business, dressing up party favors. <laughs> You remember that one. Let's see if you figure it out. It's uh, what you talked about is I, I give title to him. Yeah, hell, it makes sense. All right. Hell is real hell in Palestine. Is international law real for Israel? Oh, uh, yeah. Law to agree, not a made-for-TV Perry Mason movie. What's the equation in legalese? Now, that was the first half hour. The second half hour, you, uh, wow. you said, yeah. uh, what do we need? The blur, the blur in balance. It's the fundamentals. Things are not as complicated as they seem. Then we got wipe out the face plants of life. Wear a helmet or not. And other psych yeah. jokes. Yeah. <laughs> psych <laughs> Eye to eye, lie to lie, your side, my side, and other accepted twice. Life in a hurricane. No electricity in a 60 inch TV. 75 inch, I guess it is now, right, Kate? Uh, speed freaks, tweak your entertainment, street cams of others' memory, misery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Making memories of other mem- uh, misery. Yeah. Yeah. I, I brought that up too, yeah. Uh, probably ought to back this one up into the uh, uh, not for, uh, not, not made for TV movie. Uh, this one is Double Jeopardy, Counting Your Chances in a Courtroom. And then we've got uh, a little fun with uh, girls with guns, fun or time to run. And uh, I'm going to include the video there from that, uh, well, I forget the name of the movie, to parody. Janie's got a gun. Yeah, right. Uh, fitting in, finding what you're good at. We talked about that. And 9-11, Bush be fumbled. Bush. Ugh. And you ended up with team players in time, a wife and a dog. Yeah, because that's where I be. So, did I inspire your brain tonight, or are you just having fun? Uh, well, it's all of that. It's uh, fun and practice. Yeah, what well, it starts right up here at the top. Matter of fact, uh, it it practice well, it, makes practice makes perfect. It's just that. obvious to me this newfound love for the language that you have found recently like in the last couple of weeks i hate it right? i gotta straighten me out wow, there wow you sure seem like you're having fun because with the word game ah, it's, maybe it's i'm pain, wrong it's painful man then why do you do it because you're good at it you no, i'm not good i'm trying to be good because out of an obligation a duty entertaining right? to me is good yes okay you want me to call you a, 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 a dolt instead yes. you want to be dolt. on the dolt team the dork table, yeah. Dork. We'll, we'll, dork do a, Vincenzo. we'll do a version of the dork table. This is the dork table. The dork table. Am I being, who's the voyeurist? I'm the skipper. Well, I was just saying because I, I like to watch people do certain activities. Oh, that's what you know. And most people, when they hear voyeurism, they think it's dirty sex and all that. You know, dirty, watching murder, sex, the, the negative shit that they've been, you know, that's what they've been taught. Instead of hey, sometimes I I like to watch people cook. You know what I I like to watch. Don't know why? And I've watched a lot of cooking shows. Uh, no, like not that. on TV. I mean, in person when there's oh. somebody in the house cooking, they'll catch me in a doorway just staring at them like a hungry dog. <laughs> and and it's just funny Lighting how, in. but different people do the cooking procedures. They make the same exact thing from one way than the next person, and they're using the same food. And I'm just like, wow! How do you think of doing? You know, I'm not artistic with my my food making. Like I learned a lot of stuff from Cirque, but I had to, you know, really pay attention. To, and it's just some simple stuff like 
You know when you're cooking beans on the stove, you can add salt and pepper into them while they're cooking? <laughs> yeah, you should use some, but uh, hold hold most of your salt till after they're uh, they're cooked because it'll just soak it right in there, and you'll miss the flavor. So you've got to put a lot more salt in the end. But that was the goal because I don't like to taste the salt all that much. You're using the wrong salt too, I'll bet. Maybe not. Uh, I'm you using the, five, uh, uh, I'm getting some good salt here. You got I'm personally, Himalayan it's like or salty. I just don't. I'm not. You know that flavor thing where you like the flavor of something or you don't. I got and friends am, that don't like I'm, the taste of this salt, and I can't not, stand the taste of table salt. It's see, like, there you go. Uh, it, but it's a matter of personal thing. Yeah. It's not like it's good or bad. It's just uh, it is. There is a difference. <laughs> but it's different to all of us, you butt nugget. No. Find out uh, what. Uh, well, well, while why we're yakking, let's go uh, mm. just do a little search here. The difference what, between uh, what's up? Yeah, table salt. I'll just go table salt uh, dank. Yeah, I read that the, they got plastic in it. Hey, no telling. Microscopic plastic in the salt supply. And well, then, I mean, see, how can you trust these people called government? They're a bunch of thieves. They just write laws so that they can do dirty shit to fuck us with second-rate crap. Well, what was Grimner talking about that uh, last night? Uh, trust oh, I caught his show. The, uh, Uh-oh. Vaccines, it may have been. Um, yeah, I, I, I really like listening to Grimmer. His voice is kind of hypnotic in a way. Uh, like Hal, too. His voice is just mesmerizing. I was just glad that, you know, because Grimm was the one that told us, yeah, hey, you want radio? Go make some radio, you big sissies. So here we are. We're on the doing it, carrying our end, right? Well, in the middle, though, a lot of people said, hey, Grim, why don't you do some more radio? And he went, no. <laughs> and then what, when it was his idea, see, this is the good part about life. You know, if you let people decide when they want to do something at their own speed, you get this kind of result from their energy because they want to do it. Right? Well, I'm the same way on my my podcast, I think I want to do it. I'm not. I'm not begrudging, or you know, oh, I committed myself, and okay, I'll keep my word. No, that's not how I do. It. I do this because I really get a giggle at it most of the time, or I feel better for uh, speaking my mind about things that socially are just unacceptable. You can't talk about them. You just bring rain, and it's not worth it. Rain, rain. Okay, uh, is this going to be from? This is from Global Healing Center. Uh, yeah. The what dangers. The dangers. Uh, I haven't read it. Hold on, they're already trying to get me to undo stuff or do stuff. Sign up. No, we're not signing up. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll include this here. So I haven't read it. I'm oh. skimming. I'm skimming, looking for the topic. Uh, there. What are you looking for? Well, the uh, the manufacturer, the refinement of table salt. Uh, it, it oh, okay. It down. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. yeah. So what is in table salt? Commonly purchased, purchased iodized salts available at supermarkets or sitting on the shelf of your favorite restaurant have synthetic chemicals added to them. These chemicals include everything from manufactured forms of uh, sodium solo coaluminate, iodide, sodium bicarbonate, uh, fluoride, anti-caking agents, Toxic, uh, toxic amounts of potassium iodide and aluminum derivatives. It may come as a shock, but most table salt is not only unhealthy, but can sometimes be toxic. There you go. I'll grab the link. Yeah, but does it give you a list of companies to accuse of? So, hey. Or or does it just say all uh, all of the table salt sold globally? <laughs> All contains some sort of shit in it, or is there, it limited. That's to a, a starting countries? point for you. That's that's but is all. That, is it? It's not limited to any particular country. It's just about all forms of of salt that we eat. Ah, that's that's a, not very good. That's a short outline for you. I don't like that very nice. Uh, health dangers of table salt. Hmm. See what I mean? You can't win. Everything's bad for you. Don't matter what it is. But you can ca- you kind of balance it out when you catch up on this thing that was beating you, and you go, "Hey, I'll 
to catch up on that. Then they find something else to send out to get you. Hmm. I wonder what it'll be. I hope it's green. What are you looking for, Vinny? I hear click click in the background. Uh oh. I'm just adding to the show notes for your Because we're podcast. we're it for your perfect R log. We're in a perfect world where people get their day. Did you get your day? I got my day. My day is here and always is until they are no more. Yeah, isn't that weird? Uh huh. I don't know. I don't think it matters, but a lot of people think it matters. Yeah, some people are real caught up in all that that daily life part of it, where they're where they're gonna go. They need to they need to chant for twenty minutes to this invisible guy so they can get a good seat after the game's over. <laughs> and it just makes me laugh because <laughs> what does it matter? I'm over here. Uh, at oh the, yeah, that's the right. But, box. Uh, so I, am I not? A, am, what, but I'm knocking your I'm knocking your religious beliefs again, huh? Me? No, I didn't even think. Oh, okay. Because you can't well, do that. You can't knock go, my my religious ah, beliefs. Excellent. Me neither. You know why? What? My God got to my back. What fucking good am I going to do him? Please <clears throat> or her or it? It could be maybe a non-binary God. Or that's a, that's so ridiculous. Is it not ridiculous that a, a <laughs> aunt, an ant would write an encyclopedia on the life uh. of man? <laughs> now I don't. Uh, I don't uh, get it. Well, yeah, I I don't think a person needs uh, a God. Certainly doesn't need a man to stand and try to define him. Define him. No, no, that's insanity. God is yeah. that he is, and uh, whatever it is, yeah. yeah. So it either it, is or it it's ain't. up to or or whether you do or don't to uh, to uh, search out what it is that uh, that is. So. Well, I don't care for people that use it as a crutch or a wee pound of mass destruction. Now, if this, you catch my drift, like it, my people do, it really is. Uh, it is really so fitting and uh, and again, musing for, for me. Uh, going in with uh, where is li- uh, where is currently logged in is chapter nine. Now this stuff might uh, get moved around. It over here where uh, where uh, Circle and I first he's helping me uh, uh, formulate all this idea for the coming up here and you know putting together the uh, the program as it will uh, ah. for the new show. And at chapter all nine, right. I have the leaders. And here's a here's a, a poem I I wrote or maybe uh, plagiarized uh, uh, paraphrasingly. And uh, uh, some people will probably catch um, the little parts and where they come from. And it's hard to say because it's, well, me that wrote it. <laughs> but I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. This is <laughs> good. Is the truth written, painted like a picture, hanging on the wall, a mirror, a mirror, tell it all? Tell me how. Now, found, shattered, dying, the DK lying, raging in the light. Torn, lovelorn, lost, ne'er to go gently, ere the good night. That's it. That's Very it's poetic a of you. Well, I'm. I, you know who would be a good character judge on that would be Cirque. She's more the poetic kind of really interested in tra la la than me. Because that's where it took me, Benny. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, well, poetry tends to do that. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't not impressed. I just, not I got to put more commas. I got to put, I got to put more commas in here. Well, maybe somebody from the chat can give you a critique <laughs> on your work. More commas. You put any more commas on there? Well, it's all commas. It's it's a the andams of life in speaking yeah. are are commas. Yeah. Well, what do you want from life? I mean, do you have, like, specific demands? I demand this of life or a fuck it. That's, uh, that's, I, I don't like to look at that, looking at it like that. I, I have expectations of life. Uh, and well, life that's is. what I meant. Well, well to the point of, well, it, if I don't life, get my life, way, life, nobody life will. Doesn't, life doesn't owe me anything, does it? Hmm. I, I have I don't what I have. So. I entered in, and, and that is life. Yeah, but the having stuff is a bunch of crap. <laughs> yeah, you don't have I like what I have. I, <laughs> you I, have you. I love what I got. You know, there's a whole lot of people that don't want you to have you, though. 
But they're okay if you have stuff as long as it's not yours. Stuff. stuff <laughs> some stuff is good. But I don't, it don't I belong like, to you. Yeah, we're, we're custodians of what we have, and you know, because yeah. it's all yeah. temporal. Mm. I'm, uh... I mean, well, you are stage. very wise. Oh, yeah. my. What are we going to do with you? I have a hard time. Really, I do. And communicate. I'm skipping out the topic here. Here's Sparky Bear uh, over here on uh, on Twitter. Some of the uh, people I engage with here, the, this uh, land right issue. Not, yeah. People are just not understanding the whole issue. Now, we're talking about Bundy Ranch, uh, the lead up yeah. to it. Um, yeah. So we're at right here, number three. Uh, I have to skip up. A court order was issued in 98 and again in 2011. This is about the uh, violence and the claim uh, threats and why they had to have such a big army to come and round up these cows. Um, now, I had to go back to the beginning because she wants all these specifics to this, but let's look at why they were even there and should they have been there to start with. Uh, should they have, a, have an army to uh, remove cows from the land? It come from a suit from the Center for Biological Diversity wherein uh, Huron Suckling sued uh, under the Endangered Species Act that uh, the cattle on the land were harming the tortoise, uh, which is not true. Uh, wildlife, uh, the tortoise, maybe even uh, more especially at certain times of the year, is benefited by cattle and sheep grazing. Uh, the farmer, the rancher, uh, provides environment and habitat for uh, all kinds of other wildlife that would otherwise, otherwise not... Uh, not make it uh, there in that part of the desert. You see, literally hundreds and hundreds of miles of the same ecosystem. Uh, most of it is is not uh, utilized by anything except for doodle bugs and uh, lizards and grasshoppers and whatnot. Chiggers. Well, chiggers here, not so much in the desert. Um, so wh where are we at? It, it, you want to argue all these points in between? Of uh, well, he said, she said. Uh, uh, a bunch of FU's flat flu and, and this and that. Well, if somebody's trying to come and take your stuff, don't you have a right to, to fight? Uh, if it's your lifestyle, if they incrementally steal what you have and legislate this through this, uh, uh, what you was talking about, this legalese and, and slowly, and then all of a sudden you say, oh, wait a minute. Now let's look at it like this. That old boy, he comes along and he says, uh, Hey, I see you're having, uh, maybe you could use a little help with your business here. I'm glad to involve myself on your behalf. And pretty soon, what? You're getting uh, comply or die. That's the end story. Let's get straight to the end. Comply or die. That's where we'll start. Hmm. And how do you mean start? Comply well, or die? Start. The, why I say start? I'll start at the end to tell the story. And let's uh, let me just back up. I'll, I think I told her that very. Um, I will have to end at the beginning. Uh, why there were, why they were there. Did I write that one? Yeah. Why they were there in the first place with that. Okay. Try again. I will end at the end. And that is why they, they were there in the first place. With that, I will end. The tortoise is not in any danger by the cattle and the land is benefited. However, I include. Reserves and protections are needed. Don't enter, uh, don't misunderstand me. So there is a place for national parks, state parks, uh, federally, I, I think these were a bit protected areas. Um, but, but it's, it's used as a trick. It is the stalking horse and, um, uh, it's a setup for the takedown. So this lands, they're saying we want to remove this guy for everybody else to have use of it. But in fact, uh, most of these places, they, they so restrict access. Uh, they they got you in a roped off area to walk through uh, wilderness. While I worked on the uh, while I worked on the uh, I walked on the uh, Appalachian Trail and had a chance to engage a lot of people in conversation. And uh, I remember this one couple. Um, I'll describe them as uh, you know the rainbow uh, gathering type. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and the look the look that they gave me when I tried to say, uh, you know, talk about this use of land and how you know, everybody has a place. It doesn't mean that we should go in there and, um, you know, abuse and destroy and pollute and uh, any of that. But also, on the other hand, the opposite uh, extreme is that you just leave it alone and nobody goes in there. And since it's already been tampered with, 
uh, it, it's it's subject to even more well like the fires and so forth so man uh, puts his hand into the work uh, and can improve land uh, also to uh, to correct the uh, environmental change that uh, that has occurred but <clears throat> vincent they the senate and the congress that votes all these business laws into the system and the regulations they build the lie into the story they want to tell yeah so that whatever destruction they're doing it's 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 unethical and it's immoral but it's it's legal well the public doesn't have the wherewithal to go against them in any fucking way that matters and we could just keep having them drag this dead carcass down the road over it it doesn't end there, no matter what what happens to it like the ba bailout in 2008 they just print more money it's not real anyway. What difference does it make? Would you yeah. pretend a little longer? That that has to uh, that has to help happen anyways in order for the uh, fiat currency to continue. You're right, right. exactly. Out the rent. So it's not an accident. They said this stuff no. to happen. And why? Because then you can come back along and uh, add more uh, digits <laughs> to this. Yeah. The money supply. Imaginary debt, and it's imaginary. It's not real. If it was real, there'd be something to show for it from somebody, and the only people that are showing anything for it are these billionaires that own all this stuff, whatever the hell they think they own. So it's like a group illusion, because I wouldn't, would I know Donald Trump if he showed up at my doorstep, really? Would I recognize him? Or, I don't know. I don't, I think I'd know who, what he looks like, but, you know, when is that ever going to happen? <laughs> You know, it, it's not likely. I'm more likely to meet Rob Works at my front door than I am to ever meet Donald Trump. But, but I know what Donald Trump looks like. I would, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to, if I ever ran into him, met him. I've had, you know, life for me is is a wonderful, amazing journey, and uh, mm -hmm. man, I, I don't know. I've I've enjoyed life and have enjoyed. A great portion of it. Been a lot of places, done a lot of things, and um, come what may. Sometimes, right? Well, I brushed into Ted Kennedy in uh, New York City when I was there. <laughs> Didn't physically bump into him, but I mean, there he was, and you know, there's his car, and all these guys in suits and shit. And I was with somebody else, and we're like. Hey, that's fucking Ted fucking Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> if, hey, uh, check it out. <laughs> just off the top anyway. of your head, if uh, who in this world uh, it would be like exciting to say, oh wow, I ran into him and I got a chance to, or her, and got a chance to say hi. Or, uh, oh, people I actually met. Yeah, no, that you would, or what? Let's do both. We'll go with uh, who you actually met, then, and then we'll go with the hot. The one, well, we're okay, but I. I I've met celebrities just doing mundane things in public where I didn't expect to. I never chased them. I just would run into them occasionally. And the first one that I remember was uh, Rosie Greer was getting gas in L.A. in some gas station I was getting gas at. And I looked across, saw this big station wagon. Didn't think nothing of it. And this big, gigantic black guy. And then he turned sideways, and I saw his face. And I looked at him, and he's looking at me. And I went, you're – and he goes, yeah. And I went, Cool. And he said, thanks. And that was that. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> okay, then in the 80s, I was in a Denny's restaurant on uh, I-5. I forget the city it was in. And uh, Andy Kaufman came in and had some food and salad and some coffee or weird tea or something at the at the counter. And the waitress that waited on him was a friend of mine. And I, I'm in there having coffee and doing something. And she asked me to go to him and get her, her his autograph for her. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to do it herself. So I asked Andy Kaufman for his autograph for a waitress <laughs> in, somewhere in the early 80s. Let's see. Uh, I ran into Elton John when I was in London. Only like for um, like 30, 40 seconds worth of, I, wow, is that really you? Yeah. I said, Wow, that's cool. <laughs> what's your have, What's your famous uh, Elton John song? Tiny Dancer for me. Uh, fav favorite? Yeah, or most enjoyable. Good. Or, 
God. Top of your head. Mm, one Horse Town, probably. Uh, the, I'd go with the whole, um, that blues album he did, the double album in the 70s. Who's, who's the greatest entertainer ever was, in your opinion? My opinion? Greatest entertainer? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, how do you consider, how do you value great? My, in my uh, personal, who I think or who the world thinks? No. Bullshit. Well, we're talking about Elton John and that sort of thing. So entertainers. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, Ro- Rose, Rose, what's his name? Greer. He was an entertainer, football player. Yeah, he was a football I mean, player. That, yeah. That's still entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I admire that. I mean, to a degree, it's got to be worth something to be good at something. That's what but you were here, talking about earlier, finding what you're yeah. good at, where you fit in. So hey, entertainment, you know, that is that not a, an importance for society, for the people to, that, uh, you know, seek satisfaction and enjoyment in life? We've got music and uh I think it's our, a manipulation of our senses, but it's, sure. disguised, it's disguised as entertainment, but it's truly not. In its original form, it's it's entertaining. But after the system gets done tweaking it and changing shit, no, it's no good anymore. And then the delivery on the electric and the wavelengths are all fucked up. That's the syncopation of of the music. Yeah, we're we're going a lot lot deeper into this topic, which uh, would probably be a whole show if uh, properly researched. Um, Well, yeah, but we're so out of balance uh, mentally because of the inferior food products and the wavelengths and the energy sources and we're so used to it that it doesn't interfere with our behavior outwardly because we consider people being strange as normal now now when you're a weirdo they just make a group for you and claim it's a right it's a new normal yeah you can marry your toaster if you want to there's nothing wrong with claiming you're a toaster Uh, mm. yeah the new normal it's it's the way the world is manipulated. I, I edit and edit on this thing over here. Kind of uh, probably need to uh, focus more direction, to, but I'm trying to just put a, put something in place for each one of the uh, uh, 13 and a half parts of the broadcast. Uh, at this point, though, going back to that, where that little point was, the leaders and why our heroes are different now. Perhaps we'll, uh, perhaps to know that, we'll first need to know why our villains are different now. Uh, this is a, oh, this yeah. is going to be uh, this is a, a really a good video and I like Wisecrack. Um, they have a website. They're on Twitter, uh, YouTube. So Wisecrack, uh, one one word there. Uh, I'll bring the video that uh, people can check that out. So in, in this this uh, paraphrased plagiarist Arlog preview, it's a, a hashtag. Uh, another one I uh, tweaked that is so pound PR and capitalization for public relations ETH. Small letter for uh, ether, uh, and then view. So we got a we've got a preview, review, yeah, and it all comes together. Anyway, so life imitates art. Uh, continuing okay. from that last or the the blurred yeah. lines, uh, art imitates life. But anyways, talking about the villainry, we got to understand the villain of today to understand our hero. So we'll follow the tale uh, that's what you asked. of uh, okay. trials and troubles from our past and the world today in the cinematic history of villainry, a ponder gander, the wisecrack edition. Uh, the good, the bad, and the snugly, or maybe smeg, uh, smedley, smedley butler. Uh, is the villain's creed really no creed at all? Wisecracks, breaking uh, sense, the new normal in a postmodern world. <laughs> oh, I have an answer for you now, but good to Let's your question. It. But most of the the uh, celebrities in my life that I thought of as hero, you know, that kind of uh, level of it, they're all gone. Yeah, and most of them died really young. Yeah, but their ingenuity or whatever it was that made them what they were, I saw some of it for a minute. You know, the Jim Morrisons and, oh, who else? Jeez. It's been a lot of them come and go. Janis Joplin. <laughs> yeah. Hendrix. Oh, Brian Jones of the Stones. 
You know, that was his band, right? He started that band. Did he? Charlie Watts, the drummer, said, yeah, fuck. They've got plastered all over fucking um, London. Not plastered all over, but posted in the underground that this is where Mick Mick and Keith met. Well, that's incidental because it was, it was Brian Jones' band. It wasn't their band. It was his. And he finally, you know, he drugged and drank his way, got in bad terms with the other, everybody else enough to get thrown out of his own band. And then they eventually murdered him. Wow. Drowned in a swimming pool. Well, at the time in the history, oh, Brian Jones accidentally drowned in a... And then 20 years later, they said, well, there are two people that were there saying <laughs> he was murdered. You know, it's it's like reading about Morrison. There's so many books about the end of his life. And I read a book called uh, No One Here Gets Out Alive. And in that book, the guy that wrote it, he gave you three possibilities for how Jim may have died. And let the reader judge the information about each in each point of view and make his own mind up. Which one made the most sense to you is the one you're going to go with. But the point of the book was more that, in the end of it, was Jim Morrison was dead. There was no two ways about that. It wasn't a prank because he wouldn't have done that to Pam Corson. So, in the long run, that was the, the mental image I got of it. They had a they had a fiery breakup together, breakup together relationship. And that's one thing to have a, a breakup and get back together, but it's another to end up dead. Wow. And she only lasted 10 years after that, and she was dead. She overdosed, I think. So... Hmm. And according to the book, she was the one that was, lo you know, in love with heroin, not him. He was a coke freak, but he thought it was heroin, or he thought it was coke, but it turned out to be heroin. That's one version of how he croaked, because he was supposedly a glutton. If it was in front of him, he did it. And people like that are—I don't—I've never really engaged anybody like that personally, so I don't know it from experience. Just hearing the stories and a lot that, of a uh, lot of dark sides in the, all of that you know, yeah well there's industry. more to it though Jim Morrison's dad was an admiral in the Navy and when Jim was first getting famous right and uh, his dad was some big shot in some uh, MK Ultra deal anyway but he, when he was first getting famous, the, the whole band would introduce herself. I'm Ray Manzarek, and I play everything except the the drummer. And each of them would, and the the end they go, "Hi, I'm Jim." And that then huh. stop. That's all he said. Hi, I'm Jim. And and the reason was he didn't want people to know about his dad. He even said he was orphaned. <laughs> he was an really? orphan. He tried all kinds of shit. Yeah. It depended on what what source of information you read gives you the answer you're looking for, man. I thought you knew that. You know, there's only so many choices. There's the truth and there's the lie. And the truth is in is out there, right looking you right in the face. But the truth is disguised as something else. So you're going to be Scully or Mulder in this uh, this story? I don't the know. Does truth, Mulder ever? The truth is out there. I probably. I don't know. But what's the difference? I don't know, but that goes into the title. The truth is out there. Well, not only do I feel it's out there, I feel it's staring us right in the face. But it's disguised as something else that it truly is. We get fed the lie. Here, Here's the story they tell you, and that turns out always to be nonsense. And the truth is in it somewhere, but it's buried and, exper and expressed in a way that's not, it's not, it doesn't make it through. The guy listening, somebody still thinks the death penalty is a good idea after all the fucking mistakes law enforcement's made and put the wrong guy in prison time after fucking time. And yet people still think, oh, yeah, give him death. Well, there should be like a time limit. You know, if you're going to torture somebody like that, I think after t 30 years they figure it, figured it out. <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy on YouTube, uh, Lone Star 1776, and he, he uh, there's a lot about uh, prisoners, the prison ministry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's uh, 
Christian by definition, without apology and you know extreme uh, confined confirmed uh, ideals and stuff like that. Beside all that, I I, I can listen to somebody and, and listen past uh, their ideology. But the work he's doing there is, is with uh, uh, prisoners and particularly uh, uh, political prisoners. Now, one guy he was talking about, I don't call his name, uh, he uh, he is guilty. Uh, at, uh, I think he has 20, but he got life without parole. And I don't know the details, but what I thought I heard him say was only for things that he had talked about, talking about things. And, you know, uh, in youth, especially the, the ignorance and um, now I've been talking, I talk to people, I tell them, guard your words. When I showed up at the Bundy uh, trial in Vegas uh, and introducing myself to people, uh, I, I say there's no such thing as a bad question. Um, transparency is a lie. Uh, I don't want to be seen through, but seen into. I'm here for to be completely open and honest. And, um, you know, trust is out the window. So that, that's what happened. People get, uh, people get set up by these guys. Uh, Francis Schaefer, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Schaefer Cox, um, and, and this guy, Bill Fulton. Uh, I got his book, and I read the first two chapters, and uh, he didn't respond. I, I, I said, uh, you know, we was going to do some radio, and uh, I said, let's set up our uh, rules of engagement here And, and uh, as I read through this book. And he didn't respond to me because I, I think uh, uh, this shutting down, I, I think uh, speaking that that. Uh, revelation comes through conversation. Thank you, Chuck O'Chelly. That's that's the tweet I just put out there. And Gary Long just uh, I think that was the one he seen. Uh, he just liked that. Yeah. No, that was for today's broadcast. Where I where I tagged him. Yeah. It just popped up over here in my little window thing. So, anyways, uh, we have people that that come in here to manipulate the uh, the process of the whole legal thing and to uh, entrap people. Keep your mouth shut. Don't go around saying. Uh, like the one guy, well, go there and blow up the bit. Oh, damn courtroom. I say, you know, I know you're just talking crap, in other words, but, you know, there, there's this big box sitting here listening and, and watching. You know, you say something like that. Somebody say, oh, yeah, let's do it. And then what? And you got conspiracy charges just because you did not guard your words. Uh, Corey, Corey LeCue contacted me yesterday. He was one of the Oregon arc- occupiers that I interviewed, uh, that has, uh, 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 been disillusioned by the because Bundy, uh, Ammon Bundy has, uh, you know, talked about the immigration and the, the border and all that. So he, he, uh, he's a lot of people have turned their, their backs on the Bundys and openly criticizing them and hate, uh, where all this guy says is, uh, you know, we've got laws in place and not everybody's a criminal. Some of these people actually need help. There's a process to, uh, uh, interview and, uh, you know, some, somebody needs to help a refugee then perhaps we could, uh, you know, set up something to, to help sponsor these people. What's wrong with doing good? Then you only do good first for those uh, immediately close to your cause. Um, so anyways, uh, it, it, it's very convoluted, isn't it? Very convoluted. Pretty much. Uh, and then we're back uh, where I left off to. But we're, we, we live in a word game, right? And it's represented to the masses as one thing, and when you get involved in it, you find out it's something completely different. And then there's another layer of it, which is what it truly is. And that that seems like a big secret. People do not seem to grasp, for example, how a, a home mortgage is created through the fiat system. And they even have people from the um, Federal Reserve System going on TV and telling the public that the uh, fiat currency is more stable than Bitcoin because wow. It has more trust. You know, it, it's, oh, please. Are you, with who? For the masses of people. Oh, yeah, for, the, okay, for the people that don't own any or have any. No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Federal Reserve note is more trusted. That's the only thing it exists on. Yeah. It, it, I'm, if that's how but, it maintains its, uh, its system is only through trust because it has no uh, physical content other than but these uh, Vinny, inked up pieces of paper. There's so little, so little money really is spent using currency compared to electronics. All right, and there the bank is still pitching this crap to the poor people that don't understand the bigger scheme. 
They only see what they see. Whatever is in front of them, they can't seem to see any beyond that because they're fueling the machine that we're a victim of. Well, even knowing knowing what we know, uh, yeah. How do you how do you withdraw? You really can't, can you? No, no. The and people that run it, especially oh, yeah, some people can't. Now, especially the main people that you know are involved in normal everyday society and life uh, that has that mortgage and and so forth. You can't just well get up and say, "I'm walking away. I, I can't uh, can't no, participate no, in this no, any longer." No. You can't. Right. It won't happen. Nope. It's that's why I said make your prison comfortable because yeah. you know, Sir me got this. You know, responsibility, and the dog's going to survive inside the house, not outside the house. Mm -hmm. So the house has got to be maintained. You know, there you go. With with your uh, expectations in life come a lot of responsibilities. But it doesn't have it. It's, it only matters to the state over the finance. It's got nothing to do with anything else. They don't care about you as a living life form. You're on your own in that respect. Well, here's not so bad. I know I always say that, but they got even they got medical here. So it's like when Cirque broke her fingers with the dog, you know, and that could have turned into a, a big situation with work and all this other crap in the states. You can lose jobs over shit like that. Yeah. Well, her society protects you from being treated that way. And people are living paycheck to paycheck most most uh, instances. Right, and, and see the way like the way they've got the currency numbers here. Uh, your wages will always cover the prices because of the way the numbers are designed. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, you got one too. I've I've skipped every four twenty report. Today, oh, did you? I'm sorry, Vinny. I, yeah. You know what? See, well, I was I, don't, I was busy I don't writing. It. It's good practice because uh, um, hmm. following along, I, I yeah. did that partly with Hal, but I didn't produce much out of it. Uh, what? 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 Taking uh, taking notes to broadcast, ah. and it's more well, like uh, maybe highlights or um, ideas yeah. that kind of yeah. fall in. Yeah. It's not everything you say is a gem, but the times that you're funny or the times that you say something that's real, you know, you got a backbone to it, those things are worth hearing. Yeah. See, I, I can't really keep yeah. up too too well as uh, talking. Listening, yeah, uh, pl participating. Yeah. 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 No, I got the same problem. When I do the show, I just talk. I have no freaking idea what I've been saying, but I've been well, doing it for two hours. So what I'll do here, because some of this uh, end stuff here about Francis uh, – I keep calling that. I was going to call him Francis Schaefer again, but uh, Schaefer Cox. Uh, and, and this, I want to. I won't have it available. I'll put all this info over for the blog to Grimner, and then I'll come back and listen to the uh, to it again and add add a little bit of notes. Because see, this is helping me. It gives me a, a chance to use you as a soundboard too, uh, and, and bring in this uh, this broadcast that I'm building. Oh, and the the women were recognizing Penny Marshall got killed from diabetes. Oh, she did. I didn't know who they were said, talking about. Kind of, Kate, yeah, they Kate. were talking um, about it on the RLM main yeah. feed. I thought I'd mention it, put it on the radio for you uh, know that they weren't being ignored. We were just deep in some crap. Me and Vinny were. Uh, I don't know. You know, she, and I was reading it. You know, her uh, her her father was a a big uh, television guy. Well, that whole Jew thing, they're all related. Come on, Vinny. thought you knew. Well, they did some uh, happy days. Uh, I mean, Vern Shirley. He did a lot. Hey, you got people that came out of that, like uh, uh, Opie. Opie Taylor. What's his name? Ron Howard. Ron Howard, yeah. Um, probably among the greatest uh, entertainers or producers of entertainment. He, he would count amongst them. I, I'm gonna say oh, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. say the I'm gonna go back to my favorite greatest entertainer. I, I'm gonna go. Yeah. It's uh, not necessarily that it would mean that oh, I'm a big fan of his music, uh, but I do like a lot of his music. I'm gonna go with Michael uh, Jackson and and Elvis Presley. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna put them there together. It's the greatest can pick entertainers. Two? Yeah, okay, I, and I, can I just pick split two. them. Yeah. Clapton and Keith Richards. All right, I'm gonna write them down. Into the, so we got it. Uh, you got Clapton. Yeah, Clapton was so he was so smooth. He could, 
the guy was just magical. He could just stand in one spot and just do this magic on his guitar. Other guys jump around and you know do extra shit to get you impressed. And Clapton didn't give a fuck about how impressed you are. Listen to this. <laughs> now Keith, on the other hand, was a showman. And one of my favorite films of a guitar player was The Stones were playing, and Keith had a black Stratocaster. Is holding on to that guitar. Anyway, some guy comes bum rushing him on the on the stage. And in in one movement, he unstraps the guitar and takes a swing towards the guy to keep him away from him. And then he throws the guitar around and restraps it and picks up in the song uh, in the room uh, where uh, he's uh, supposed to be. Wow. And at that point in my life, I became a Keith fan. I went, "Wow, you don't get any better than that." That's, like, perfect. And then, there you go. And they're still both alive, so I'm not picking dead dead saviors, you know? Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Pick a dead savior, because there's a lot of them to choose from. Which one's your favorite dead savior? Uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Really? Ah, what a creative mind. Who knows if he lived that stuff he wrote or not I mean people assume that writers experience what they write not sometimes I assume that the writer just was creating a story and hit some of the details right on the mark by luck you know but who knows maybe he lived it but some of the books were like hop frog was wow <laughs> what a story let's go to the poets dot org for uh Poets. Dot, why are we going to the poets. Uh, it was a second. Oh. Link. It was a second link that popped up. I'll include it at the uh, bottom of our broadcast. The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe lived between uh, 1809 and 1849. Yeah, and they're not even crazy. sure. The last three days of his life were unaccountable for, as far as any kind of physical proof. It's all conjecture. It's a long poem. Marie yeah, but the, first. can you imagine that not being accounted for in the last three days of your life? Wherever he was, nobody wrote it down. Hey, that kind of goes with a little story that uh, Cirque wrote uh, following up on my uh, Stephen Easley. Uh, that was, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's actually a perfect uh, intro for the book I've been writing in my uh, head for a long time, the, uh, the uh, Zombie Apocalypse it's uh, the the uh, archived events of the inner world. It's a chronic, uh, uh, chronicling of uh, zombie apocalypses, and they go back through history. And it's not all uh, – there's so much to it, and it kind of really almost incorporates uh, all this uh, zombie genre and brings it in uh, to one and all these other different ideologies. That, uh, it would be very fun, but, you know, again, <laughs> i got to be able to write and be able to do that. So I'm, I'm making my first, first run with the uh, – uh, a judge, a jury, and half his chance in the uh, the Bundy trial. That'll be a 13, mm. 13 chapter book, and uh, one half will be the epilogue. I'm gonna read. Uh, I'm gonna read the first part of this, The Raven, and we'll put it. Well, I wrote a I wrote a story with Cirque once. Oh yeah. Well, I I got to title it. I think she did most of the writing. Well, yeah, I threw her of an obscure idea, but she does she does all that word construction. Yeah, she's good too. You know. But the the character was the proctologist. <laughs> he was my my creation, and uh, she put him to paper, you know, to word. But yeah, he's been saving assholes since time began. <laughs> Sometime one asshole at a time, you know. Don't don't crowd us here. <laughs> the proctologist. <laughs> but anyway, she made up some story about how the proctologist became the proctologist. And put it to paper. And there you go. But that's her work. I just titled it. <laughs> I think. I can't remember now if I helped her write it or not. <laughs> I'm getting old, Vinny. Yeah. Life is pat. Yeah, you know, these little, the little small details. You know. Well, you spend five years with somebody, and the days kind of they. It's not an exciting kind of hoopla life. It's a very comfortable thing. So big stuff doesn't, you know, it's small and it doesn't stand out so good. <laughs> That's what I think. 
Well, I know Circle is such a cool, awesome, wonderful person. I, I love her. And I always say this right, uh, wrong. It's either ball bag or ball sack. It's the uh, rough translation of uh, a smart brain that they use there. I don't, I don't know. Anyway. Don't ask me to translate. It's, it since you have a beautiful ball sack. Ball bag. Ah. Well, I think it's ball bag. I think it's bag. Ball sack. Ball bag. No, ball bag. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> nobody said that to me yet. Well, <laughs> since I've been here, I've never. That's heard because you're. Yeah. A, that's because you're a ball sack. <laughs> no, that's you wouldn't tell that to a child, you dork. No, and if you're that's, speaking in in uh but, over there in Danish, you know, and you're saying yeah. it in Danish, you'd be like. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but it means say, you have such what? a you have such a beautiful brain that thing what inside the the, the, your head there your your bag on top of your shoulders. But what in the world would I be speaking Danish to anybody I, for? You're, you're not on drugs. You're not. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Wait. Do you hear that? I know better. What? No. Click 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 click. No once, what? Once upon a midnight dreary. Oh, you're cleaning your pipe. No. Yeah, we oh, no, I'm going to close and then let you close. Yeah, I'm going to run this out to the end here and then let you say our goodbyes. It's the red. Oh, oh the it's Edgar time to go. Alan Poe. Once upon, a, once upon a midnight dreary. While I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volumes of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping. That's us. Someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Yay. Vinny can read. No, sometimes. Proud of you. You've come a long way. Thank God for medical science. Yes, marijuana, by golly. (laughs) Marijuana. Yeah, you know, see... I'm never going to let go of that, though. Ever, ever, ever. I'm so, the, Marijuana. There's no such thing as marijuana. There's cannabis. Yeah, I know. Mary James. Uh, uh, I know, but how, this favorite. is yeah. what the deceit of the, You're right. the governing it's made power up, is. made-up word. Freaking disgusting. Legalese and all that other fun diseases. That, yeah, trapped in this freaking, what, verbal world. Unarmed, too. It's mean. You know, but what are you going to do? Unarmed. What's the foot? <laughs> anyway, so thanks for hanging out with us today at the In a Perfect World podcast on reallibertymedia.com. Thanks, y'all. This is Flash, and that's... Vinny Skipper today. Hello. We've, a ride. Now, we've got, we've got coming up Wednesday and Friday... We got Grammy Mary on in a, her rocket chair podcast. Yeah, 6 p.m. Central. And then we got Grimner and Moose Girl after Grammy on Friday night with the Freakers Ball. 10 p.m. Central. And then the next day, there's me. Flash Dork. Rooney, 11 a.m. Central. The Dork Table. And we're going to have a Dork special table. adult table, I think, sometime. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll play. If you, if you be available for it, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> At the door table. Yes. At noon uh, central, we have uh, Grimner uh, Sunday playing some blues, and we're playing the trivia over there, followed by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed at 3 p.m. Eastern. Makes it noon at his time on the left coast. Uh, coming back along, we got Grimner. It was be his third broadcast of uh, Grim Leftovers, some, uh, some of the warmed-up news that uh, – May have been left lying it around. Warm. It got cold. It's the cold news. Yeah, it's warmed over though. Well, nah. I love leftovers. Just bringing it back. Come on. I like the show. I I thought it was very uh, entertaining. Too bad he didn't have any live call like the first week. He had this woman call. It was. It made the show funny. Hmm. But no, no, call, nobody did it uh, this week. Maybe huh. next week. Well, yeah, but I don't. I don't think it was a gag. It was just somebody's point of view they, about a particular they, person. They know one another. She's uh, she's from ah, way back when, around here. Ah, I'm pretty well, sure. Uh, it was it, before it was before me, and I've been around over here for a few years. It was very entertaining to me. Yeah, that's all. 
Hey. Just saying. Revelation mm. through conversation, right? Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, come right back and round this out again next uh, week on Tuesday, uh, and that is at noon central. It's uh, 7 in the evening uh, when it starts over there in Denmark with Flash and uh, in a perfect world, contrasting the uh, occupation. Yo, next week I'm going to try to get Sylvester Stallone to come on the show and talk to you all. Forget about it. Yo. So are we out of here? We're done. Thanks for listening. Say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Gracie.